Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, we will discuss certain key terminology for Amazon Bedrock. So let's get started. I have this reference URL over here. Um, this URL has additional information on some of the terminology that we will discuss today. I would recommend that you visit this URL. Also, I have created a playlist on my channel for Amazon Bedrock. This video, along with other videos that I'll create on this topic, will be added to this playlist. I would recommend that you bookmark this URL so that you can go back to it easily. Both these reference URLs and the playlist URL will be mentioned in the description of this video. So the first terminology that we have is an AI model. What is an AI model? A lot of people don't understand you know, what an AI model is. We keep on talking about all different kinds of models, but to go to the basics, what is an AI model? An AI model essentially refers to a mathematical or a computational structure that is trained to recognize patterns in data and make decisions or predictions based on that particular data. Right? So it's a logical, complex, mathematical, computational structure that is trained on data and it uses its logic to make decisions or predictions based on the data that is that it has been provided with in very simple words that's an ai model for you <clears throat> now let us look at what is a base model a base model again essentially is an ai model that is built or developed by a provider of course there is nothing that is stopping you from creating your own base model and this particular model is trained with a generic data set. Okay, so it's a very simple model. It is, uh, that's why it's called as a base model. It's trained with a generic piece of data set that either you've created or a third party has created and given it to you for further use. Now, typically a base model can be used to create foundational models. So now let us look at what is a foundational model or FM. So a foundational model is an AI model that has large number of parameters and that is trained with massive amounts of diverse data to generate a response as, a ch as chat, text, or image. So these three terms are the key over here. Okay, You have to remember these three terms. And going forward, I will not be saying foundational model. I'll be just saying FM. And in most of the conversations also, you will hear people saying that, hey, I use this particular FM. FM stands for foundation model. Another thing that I would like to point out over here is that a lot of times people use the term base model and foundational models interchangeably. Uh, in most cases, you know, like people just use it loosely, but there is a difference between a base model and a foundation model. Remember, a base model is an AI model that is trained on a generic data set versus a foundational model is typically trained on massive amounts of diverse data sets. Of course, I mean, what kind of data you want to use, whether diverse or not, is totally up to you. But typically, the data that is used to train a foundational model is labeled data. Okay. Uh, so in very simple words, a base model acts as a foundation to develop or create a foundation model. So as long as you just remember that, you'll be fine. Now let's go to the next terminology that we have. We have model inference. The process of a foundation model generating an output or a response from a, from a given input or a prompt is called as model inference. Now we already know what a model is. Inference in very simple English essentially means conclusion. So when a model takes your input, your prompt, generates an output or a, a response, right? it goes through a massive amount of computations behind the scenes. Remember, it's a mathematical computational structure that is built on logic. So and it evaluates your data and finally generates a response. 
that entire process of evaluating your input and generating an output and essentially coming to a conclusion or uh, generating an inference is called as model inference. What is a prompt? Prompt is the input provided to a model so that it can generate a corresponding response or an output for that particular input. I have actually created a whole video on prompt engineering. And I would certainly recommend that you listen or view that particular video because as we get more deeper into AI, prompt formation, prompt engineering, right, is going to be more and more critical. The next term that we have is token. So a token is a sequence of characters that a model can interpret as a single unit, right? So you have you have a bit, you have a byte. Byte is made of eight bits. So it's a single unit. It can be broken down into bytes. So essentially token in a similar manner is a sequence of characters that a model interprets as a single unit. When you work with, this, with these different models, it will tell you the number of tokens that model can process. Typically, the magical number that you will see is 512. Okay, so next after that we have is model parameters. So these model parameters essentially are different values that define a model and its behavior to interpret an input and generate an output or a response. So you can have different model parameters that you can configure and set so that the input has been is will be processed in a specific manner and the output will be generated in a corresponding manner as well. Along with model parameters, what we have is inference parameters as well. And remember, we discussed about model inference on the top. So now, inference parameters are values that can be adjusted during model inference. Remember, that is a process of taking the input and generating the output so that the final output can be influenced. So you are setting certain parameters so when the model does this entire processing, it generates an inference. It can influence the, the response or the output in a specific manner or in a specific way. Next term that we have over here is playground. So playground essentially is this GUI interface that AWS Management Console gives you that you can use to you know, work with, learn with, experiment with, uh, and familiarize yourself with Amazon Bedrock and the foundational models that are provided along with it. After that, we have embedding. The process of condensing an information and transforming it into a vector. A vector is nothing else but a set of numerical values is known as embeddings. Now, the reason why this is done is that it's easier to compare numbers or sim, uh, to compare numbers compare than anything else. So when you are looking for similarity or differences between objects, it will use this numerical representation to see if there's a similarity or a difference between the two objects. So essentially embeddings uh, is the process in which you take this data and you transform that into a numerical uh, vector or a numeric, okay? A set of numerical vectors could be multiple vectors as well. And then essentially you use this numerical vectors to identify similarities or differences between objects. Now, generally it is used when you're comparing, you know, two documents or two files, or you're creating a knowledge base and you're trying to search for something how does it know that, okay, this is where the response is? Because it's comparing your question with the data that it has. And it knows that, okay, this is where the response seems like. Right? So this is, this is probably where I should pick up uh, my information and then generate a response from here. Because it's comparing certain values. So if you're asking it as to what is AI and you have a white paper on AI, or what is DDoS and you have white paper on DDoS is looking for that DDoS and it is looking for some of those numerical values over there. 
essentially behind the scenes. It's a far more complex process, but in very simple words, if somebody asks you what an embedding is, is basically a, a vector representation or a numerical vector representation of data. Next, let us look at orchestration. The process of coordinating between a foundational model and your enterprise data and applications in order to carry out a task is an orchestration. I think all of us have worked with orchestrations sometime or the other. So it's the same thing over here. You just have to understand from a, from a bedrock standpoint that of course you have a foundation model, you have your data, that goes without saying, and you have your applications. So orchestration is essentially nothing at but a task that has, or a process that has been carried out. What is an agent? An agent is an application that, that carries out these orchestrations by interpreting your inputs and producing your outputs using a foundational model, right? So you want to have an agent in between. Of course, you on top of your agent, also you can create your application, which is going to be your specific GUI. You can give a GUI interface behind the scenes, right? But essentially that GUI will be calling an agent in between. And that agent will essentially carry out that task or an orchestration, interpreting your inputs and producing a specific output. And remember, since we are we are talking about AI, you will have a foundational model behind the scenes that is doing that entire processing, that is doing the model inference. After that, we have RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, this particular acronym is also very critical because a lot of time people will say that, hey, it's a RAG, okay? And they're not going to say Retrieval Augmented Generation. They're just going to talk using this acronym. So what is a RAG? RAG is a process of querying and retrieving information from a data source in order to augment a generated response. Right. So let's say you have your input or your prompt going. This is your model over here. Now this model is going to take this particular prompt, is going to retrieve some data, and then it is going to generate a response over here. So this process in which the model retrieves data, hence the word retrieval, generates a response and augments that response. Augment is basically you want to change it, you want to, you want to tweak your response, whatever you want to do with your response. So you have augmented response. So when it generates this, this entire process of retrieving data and generate an augmented response is essentially called as retrieval augmented generation. So the, the term RAG is made of three words, right? Retrieval, augmented generation. Retrieval is retrieval of data. Augmented is generating an augmented response. And generation essentially is because you're generating something. Okay, that's how RAG came into existence. So that's the simplest definition of RAG that you can have. So you just have to remember and understand clearly, you know, what these terms are and what they do behind the scenes. So every word in this term, retrieval augmented generation, has a value. It plays a key and an important role in the whole process of taking an input, retrieving the data, augmenting the response you uh, before giving it to the user. So that's why it's called as the retrieval augmented generation because it's doing all this behind the scenes. Next we have is model customization. The process of using training data to adjust model parameters, values in order to create a custom model is model customization. Hey, you have done a lot of customizations in your life, right? UI customization, any other kind of customization. Similarly, when you customize a model by adjusting its, its parameters and using certain type of data is called as model customization because essentially at the end of it, you'll be creating a custom model. Hyperparameters. These are values that can be adjusted for model customization to control the training process 
and consequently the output of the custom model. So hyperparameters are parameters that are typically used to do this particular process. They are part, they use tightly with custom model customization. And of course, the output of model customization is essentially a custom model. Next we have is model evaluation. So the process of evaluating, comparing, you know, figuring out whether this model is the right model for me. Uh, is this the right model for my use case? Does it give me the right response? You know, that process is called as model evaluation. And of course, while you're evaluating a model, you will work with multiple models and you will see that how each model responds to your prompt, how it generates the response. Is it accurate? Is it what I want? So that is the process of model evaluation. Next we have is provision throughput. So when you work with a model, remember that it takes an input or your prompt and it generates an output or a response. But you that input, output, and the speed that in, at which that it generates a, a response uh, may not be enough when you create a commercial application. So when you create a commercial application, that's when you need a certain level of throughput from this model that, hey, you know, model, you got to do this much more faster and I have so many prompts coming to you. You have to process this much, much faster. Okay, because I cannot keep my customers and my clients waiting. So if you need a certain level of throughput from a model, okay, you have to purchase that throughput. Now it could be for a base model, it could be for a foundation model, it could be for a custom model. So when you say you have a provision throughput, essentially provision throughput is a purchase throughput for your model in order to increase the amount or the rate of tokens that it processes while it is generating your response or your output. The process is of course called as model inference. So in very simple words, when someone says that, hey, uh, you know, what is the provision throughput? Do you have provision throughput? So if you bought throughput for your model, you've purchased throughput for your model so that it can increase the, the number and the rate at, at which it processes different tokens so that uh, while, it's, uh, while it's generating an inference for you, essentially that is called as provision throughput or purchase throughput for your model. So I hope that all of these terminologies are clear. Um, I would, you know, just ensure that I understand these terminologies really very well. Not just because you want to work with Amazon Bedrock, but when somebody is talking about AI, they will use these terminologies. Okay, they're not going to go into the definition. They're just going to come and say, you, hey, I had this uh, FM that I bought the other day and I bought uh, provision throughput along with it. So now you have to understand what's an FM. You have to understand what a provision throughput is. And now we are processing from uh, 512 tokens to let's say, uh, 1024 tokens or whatever X number of tokens. So you have to understand that, you know, uh, they have bought additional throughput so that the token processing can be much more faster. And what is a token? Token is the sequence of characters that a model treats and process it as, processes as a single unit. So not every time people will get into these nitty gritties. Hence, these terminologies become very critical. People may come and even ask you, hey, what is a what is your model's inference? You know, what is a model inference? So you have to be, you have to understand what they're talking about. They're talking about the process in which the model takes your input, processes it, and generates an output or a response. So, guys, this is it from me today. I hope that this video is helpful. Do let me know your comments. And I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.